Hi there, Jen Pachichi here. Welcome to my complete full supply list for every single textured painting that I make. This is gonna go into a little bit more detail than my handout and I'm just gonna show you every single thing I am currently using. So the biggest question I get always is about what do I use to make my paint so thick? So obviously, or not, maybe not obviously, the kind of paint I use, just plain old paint, is acrylic paint. You can use any kind of acrylic paint. I've been buying this lately. This comes from Cheap Joe's Art Supply because I have one nearby. Um, but you can use any kind of acrylic paint. If you are just gonna be making plain neutral white art, you don't really even need paint. You can just use the acrylic medium. So the two kinds of acrylic medium that I use are, I buy them by the gallon. You can buy a smaller container. Golden High Solid Gel Gloss. Golden um, has this high, so high solid gel. It is the most opaque of the acrylic mediums that you can buy, and it has the least shrinkage. If you use, um, anytime you use an acrylic medium, as it dries, it can, can kind of um, shrink back a little bit. It can shrink away from the edges. It can, it just contracts when it dries. This one still does it, but it does the least. And I like the gloss, which I'll tell you why in a minute. I don't use the gloss all alone though. If you just use the gloss, I have found it's very shiny, which is okay, but it's also, it's not sticky. Like if you touch it, your finger will stick to it. But if you put paper against it, or if it is up against anything else for too long, it tends to get stuck. And if you stick it against paper accidentally, like if it's there long enough, it can actually adhere to the paper and then you can't get it off. So I, I wouldn't recommend using this by itself. So I mix it in a one-to-one -one ratio with this. So this is Liquitex Flexible Modeling Paste. I have used other modeling pastes. You can experiment. You are welcome to do whatever you like. I have heard um, modeling paste, if it's too thick, can crack. Um, this flexible modeling paste helps with that. I have no problems. As I said, I mix these in a one-to-one -one ratio. So just one scoop of flexible modeling paste and one scoop of high solid gel gloss. Um, so equal amounts. And I have never had any issues with cracking or anything like that. I like my paintings to have a sort of a, maybe you would call it like a satin finish. Like it might be kind of hard to tell, but this painting, it's not completely matte. It has a little bit of a shine, but it's not super shiny. Um, if you don't want any shine at all and want it to be completely matte, then you can try using just flexible modeling paste. As I've said, I've heard modeling paste can crack. So I like to mix it with the high solid gel gloss. They do have a matte version. So you don't have to get the gloss if you don't want any shine at all. So that is what I use. So I use a, usually a big scoop. You'll see in the um, some of the other classes if you take them like on making gradients and stuff. I use, you know, a squirt of paint, maybe that big, with a pretty big, you know, glob of the gel mediums. So you're only really using a little bit of paint when you're making these paintings, but you are using a decent amount of this. So that is what I use as far as the actual materials that go onto the painting. So next we have to talk about painting surface. I am a professional painter and <laughs> sell my paintings. So I usually buy this. This is the level three, so the highest level um, Michaels professional canvas. I have a Michaels in my area and I'm a rewards member and I buy the giant packs, um, like 12 packs of canvas. So it's a, it's a good price. Um, you can, however, if you're just trying to make some, you know, DIY stuff for your house, if you have old paintings, like I have some paintings, a painting in my garage that a relative gave me that like is not a painting we'd really put in our house. You can easily take that painting if it's in a frame bonus, you can take it out of the frame, you can make your DIY art and then put the frame back on or put a new frame on it. You can just paint over like a layer of white before you get started um, or gesso. Um, if you don't want to do that, or if you don't have any canvases like that. Sometimes I'll use this level two canvas from Michaels, which is also good quality. It's not as thick. Um, I really, I bought this just 
for class teaching to show you guys and do experiments with. I don't know if I'll ultimately end up selling these paintings. Um, Michael's, and I'm sure other craft stores, also sells a level one canvas. Those are fine. It depends on what you want to do with it. If you're just hanging it in your house and it's never going to really get moved around, it's probably fine. They're not as sturdy. They're not as good quality. But, you know, if you're just playing around and having fun and don't have any you know, plans to like ship this anywhere or be moving it from room to room. You can just buy what you can afford. Some people prefer wood. You can also buy cradled wood boards. You can buy them in packs like online, um, like a birch board, um, and it'll be a piece of wood affixed sort of to a back, almost like this. Um, so that works fine too. That's what you'll need for your painting surface. And then let's talk about mixing paint and then tools. So I mix all of my paint generally on this pretty pretty good sized um, glass cutting board, the Pioneer Woman. This was in like the discount uh, the discount section. It's very pretty, but it was the largest one I could find. So this is what I got. I prefer using glass because once the material is dry, if it dries on here, you can use a razor blade um, to scrape it off. It won't scrape it up. I actually happen to be working on a glass desk. So I actually have this huge glass surface and I used to mix my paint up on here, but I realized it would take too long. I couldn't really get it completely clean and it would take too long for the paint to dry for me to scrape it off if I was working on multiple projects. That's why I got this glass cutting board. It works very well, um, depending on what kind of art you plan on creating. So if you're just gonna mix a big batch of acrylic mediums together, and then slop it on and like do different things with your tools, which I'll show you in a second. You may not need a, a board like this, but if you want to mix colors into it and do gradients and do different colors, and if you want to use a palette knife um, to make some nice strokes, which I'll be showing you in the next video, you probably will want some sort of surface like this. It definitely should be separate than anything that is used for food, obviously. I mean, this costs like three bucks. Um, so that's where I mix all of my paints. Although I will admit, sometimes I like mix things up just in a, I have this other glass container and I just, you know, grab and slop from it. But that's not for when I'm mixing in colors or making palette knife strokes. The next thing are tools. I have, this isn't even all of them. I have a bazillion, um, a bazillion tools. You do not need a bazillion tools. I would recommend, so I have linked, I bought this original five pack of palette knives online. They're not all right here for some reason. They have these darker handles. I'm missing one of them. Who knows where it is? Um, but I got this original five pack. I think it's just another one like this, but smaller. I think it's like this, but it's not this one. Um, and I really, I have stuff all over the place. So you will want, I would say at the very least, you will want a palette knife that has this shape. This is really good for making sort of like a petal shape if you push down this way, or you can make kind of like a neat kind of like half circle shape pushing down this way. And you can use this to mix paints with acrylic medium. So that this kind I definitely recommend. Um, these are similar. I prefer this size. These are kind of long and not quite as easy to maneuver. And this one too. I really, I like the round shape that you get from it. And I'll be showing you how to use that. So if you were only going to buy two, I would probably get these two. Uh, and like I said, I linked to the original set that I got if you just want to start with a small set. And then I've just, I have bought more. I have this shape. Um, I have, a lot of them are just the same sort of, what shape would you call this? It's not a triangle. It's got this extra part, but in different sizes, you know, some really big ones. Um, but I use really, sometimes I'll use this one. I just use really the same ones over and over. I do like this one. It has the square. Like if you're going to make different marks, it can be fun to have different shapes. This is actually my husband's, which eventually he will probably want back. Um, he has one zillion different sized. This is a spackle knife, I guess is what you would call it, or a spackle spreader, drywall. Um, this is good for spreading things on and also fun for making lines in your uh, m medium, which I'll show you in the next video. These come in thin sizes. They come in big sizes. This I think is like the, maybe the three inch 
So if you want, you can buy plastic versions of this too, if, if you do want one of these. This is just a cheapo plastic spatula that we had in the kitchen that I used to scoop out the medium because it can be hard to get enough medium out like using something like this. Again, this is just if you're gonna be doing it frequently. Uh, I originally started using this comb to make lines through my paintings. It still works well. Um, I don't use it as much though since I bought these. So these are called tile trowels and I just got these from my local Lowe's. I think they were a couple bucks a piece. This one has little square notches in a couple different sizes and this one has triangular shaped notches and then a flat side. Another thing that I haven't experimented with but that I think would work really well for making textured paintings would be cake scrapers. If you go online and look up cake scrapers, they're similar, but you can usually get packs of like nine of them. They'll have different ridges. They'll have different kind of like cutout designs. Um, and they look like they'd make really neat paintings too. So it's really all about having fun and experimenting, but these are the main tools that I use. Is there anything else I want to mention? Uh, I will say, possibly a paintbrush. I generally prefer to add my color right to my medium and then paint with the color or sculpt and palette knife with the color. However, I have seen some people use just the medium. They let it dry. And then like if you made arches, which arches are very popular right now, then you could mix your color separately and then use a paintbrush to paint over the dry material. So if, if that is the case, you may want this is a round size 12. The Princeton Heritage brush is my favorite, left over from my watercolor days. Um, or you might potentially, this is a terrible example. This one's so old and like messed up, but like a, a flat brush like this might, might be your preferred um, method for painting. I hardly ever even use the paint brushes anymore though. Other things you might want, I don't know, if you have like leftover fabric or if you have, like if your kid um, had Play-Doh tools, like anything that you can use to make a texture, like a sponge, you could put a sponge onto the wet mixture and make a neat texture. Um, you could mix in things like sand. Um, I'm trying to think of what else would be, again, if you're not selling these and you don't care about their archival quality, like you could just experiment with whatever you want. There are a lot of different tools that make a lot of different cool designs, but these are what I'm going to be using at minimum. I would have something that can make lines either. I mean, these are so cheap, something like this. Um, I am doing a couple paintings like this lately, and you may see an example of that. Um, and then definitely at least a round palette knife like this and one shaped kind of like this, a surface, a way to mix up your medium, and you are good to go.